No country in the world is self-sufficient in mineral resources. But in terms of quantity and variety of minerals, there are few areas on Earth comparable to Ontario. Ontario is a significant rural producer of gold, uranium, platinum, zinc, silver, and copper. We're the world's largest commercial supplier of nickel, and we mine more non-fuel minerals for commercial use and in greater volume than any other province or any of the 50 United States. To give some idea of the importance of mineral resource development in Ontario, minerals bring about two and a half billion dollars into the provincial economy every year. Yet, for most of us, the wealth beneath our feet is taken for granted. In the next few minutes, we'll see how minerals mined in Ontario make possible not only tens of thousands of jobs here, but are crucially important to the development of our transportation, communications, shelter, health, culture, and even our entertainment. What we'll see, in fact, is that minerals from Ontario mean life itself. As individuals, our use of minerals is incredible. It is estimated that to meet individual needs of each single consumer in Ontario, 20 tons of minerals must be extracted from the ground every year. That's for each person. Our individual use of minerals is so pervasive, we can only begin to count the ways the average Ontarian uses minerals every day. Take the first hour or so of a typical day, for example. We wake into the sound of an alarm clock, which only works because of its mineral content, whether it's platinum and copper in the clock radio, or the brass and steel of the old-fashioned alarm clock. Uranium produces electrical power, which, carried by copper wire, brings electricity into our homes. Virtually every convenience is largely the product of minerals. The razor, hair dryer, bathtub and mirror, even our toothpaste is partly mineral and may contain either barite, talc or gypsum. Without minerals, there'd be no radio or television. Our cooking appliances, the utensils we use to eat, are almost 100% mineral. Without minerals, the stove you cook on, the fridge that keeps food fresh, the coffee pot, toaster and dishwasher, all would literally go down the drain. And of course, there'd be no drain either. The window is another Ontario mineral product, glass from silica sand. If we read the paper this morning, we did so because of the steel, copper, and lead in the printing press. Minerals brought most of us to work today. More than 95% of an automobile, bus, or subway train is mineral, and about 30 different minerals are needed to produce them. Minerals make it possible to do our jobs these days. All sorts of equipment we use in our workday, even the projection and sound equipment we're using at this moment, would not exist without minerals. Consider, too, how vastly different your community would be were it not for Ontario's mineral wealth. Towns and cities would never have developed so quickly without the opening up of Ontario's mines. And our industrial centers would be virtually non-existent were it not for easy and cheaper access to minerals needed for the manufacture of consumer products. Steel, sand, stone, gravel, clay, and cement provide the materials to build our homes, farm buildings, factories, and offices. All mineral products from Ontario's ground. And how insignificant our modern architecture would be without the steel and glass content of our buildings. Gravel provided our first stable roads and iron gave us the rails and iron horse that built Ontario and Canada. Today, Ontario's mineral resources make possible our network of highways that provide quick and easy access to all parts of the province. But minerals provide much more than modern convenience. They're essential to stay alive. One Ontario mineral, salt, has the distinction of also being a food. We need salt in our bodies not only for health reasons, but our meals wouldn't taste the same without it. And many people, of course, regularly take supplements of other minerals to augment their diets. 
Altogether, more than 30 minerals are mined in Ontario, and the ways in which we use them are countless. So, let us for the moment consider just one of these 30 minerals. Platinum, and some of its uses. Ontario, along with South Africa and the Soviet Union, is one of the world's three major producers of this precious and incredibly versatile metal, which is a byproduct of nickel mining at that. Platinum has a multitude of uses, and here are only a few. Platinum is used in surgical instruments to provide the sharpest and most durable cutting edge ever devised. It can also provide relief from extreme pain that even narcotics cannot achieve. It is used to carry electrical impulses in heart pacemakers. It's used to control artificial eyes and to retain dentures. Platinum also enriches our food supply, and without it, it's certain that thousands, perhaps millions of people in the world would starve to death. For platinum is used as a catalyst to produce virtually all of the world's nitric acid, the basic feedstock for the production of fertilizer that multiplies the size of food crops. The remarkable grain and cattle output of Canada and the large food and animal production of southern Ontario could not have been achieved without platinum. Most of us feel the price of gasoline is high enough, but without platinum, which is used in the oil refining process to improve the efficiency of fuel production, it would cost a great deal more to run our cars. The largest consumer of Ontario platinum by far is the automotive industry in the control of auto exhaust pollution. A bonus from the use of the newer exhaust converters is increased fuel efficiency. In one year, their use in the United States alone saved two billion gallons of the world's oil supply. Platinum has literally hundreds of other uses, from preserving apples to use in satellite operations. An incredibly useful, versatile metal indeed. We've seen that minerals mined in Ontario provide us with shelter, increased food supplies, communications, transportation, and other necessities. But minerals also help to provide some of the things that give us pleasure in the aesthetic sense. Minerals are used almost exclusively in the creation of jewelry. And as one of the world's major producers of gold, silver, and platinum, Ontario has a thriving community of artisans and goldsmiths. And their creations grace the necks, ears, and arms, and bodies of people all over the world. of minerals in producing works of art began before recorded history, but their durability is such that many of them are with us still, unblemished by time, and metal sculpture is more popular than ever. If minerals are pleasing to the eye, they're also music to our ears, for what would this band be without copper, nickel, brass, and a dozen other metals? <laughs> entertain us in other ways, on roller skates and roller coasters, snowmobiles and ice skates, cameras and fishing reels. Minerals produce trains and planes that bring tourists to Ontario to visit our entertainment centers, largely constructed of metal and glass. Clearly, minerals are important to us, and as we have seen, our individual consumption of them is enormous. And by now, we should have a better idea of why it's necessary to take from the ground 20 tons of minerals for each of us every year. Mineral production in Ontario is obviously a big industry. Domestic and world demand for our mineral wealth means employment for 40,000 people in Ontario mines and the refining industry. It also means jobs for another 300,000 people in Ontario 
who supply the industry with equipment and other support services. Under Canada's constitution, minerals in the ground belong to the provinces, and nearly a century ago, Ontario recognized the need for a government office to set exploration and development policies and to begin detailed surveys and mapping. Today, the Mineral Resources Group of the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources has these management responsibilities. The Mineral Resources Group in main office is comprised of the Mineral Resources Branch and the Ontario Geological Survey. The chief objective of these offices is to encourage and regulate the orderly development and use of our mineral resources. The Mineral Resources Branch performs numerous functions and services that private industry can't do. It deals with problems the industry finds difficult to resolve. Often, for example, mining companies may not agree on policies or controls to be set for the industry. It's the role of the Mineral Resources Branch to establish standards that work in the best interests of both the industry and the people of the province. Occasionally, mining developments may result in questions or complaints from citizens or protest groups, and it becomes the responsibility of the Mineral Resources Branch to seek answers, solutions, or compromises. Methods and extent of taxation for the industry must be established and continually reviewed by the branch. Another responsibility is to provide the Minister of Natural Resources with a constant flow of detailed, up-to-the-minute information and to research and develop mineral policy options. As policies are approved by the minister, they are developed and administered by the Mineral Resources Branch with a continual analysis of the effectiveness of the programs. The branch undertakes worldwide studies of each mineral element now produced in Ontario to help determine future world supplies and possible demand and prices. Government and industry use the information to anticipate effects on the economy. The Ontario Geological Survey, referred to as OGS, has two main roles. It provides geological information and encourages industrial exploration. It also provides government agencies with information on which to plan policies for land use management. The OGS is responsible for provincial government inventory and analysis of the geology and mineral deposits of Ontario. Every year, the survey sends out between 30 and 40 field crews for this purpose. Samples they bring back are analyzed, subjected to various tests, and we thus learn what Ontario is really composed of beneath the surface of our land and waters. New information obtained through field surveys is added to the knowledge accrued over the past and is available to both government and industry. The Ontario Geological Survey produces many maps each year, and these are continually updated, not only with new information produced by ministry field crews, but also with data obtained from the federal government and the private sector. Technical reports are produced each year, and these are of a high international standard, studied by top industry and government people around the world. The mining industry pays back to the people of Ontario an average of more than $50 million a year in provincial taxes alone. And this does not include corporation and federal taxes. Our abundance of mineral resources has helped us to attain one of the highest living standards ever known. But if this is to continue, high mineral production levels must be maintained. While Ontario is one of the world's leading mineral producing areas, it's also one of the most highly explored. As we use up easily discovered surface mineral deposits, it becomes more and more difficult to locate new deposits, those that are located deep below the surface. And this makes exploration costlier requiring more sophisticated equipment and more highly skilled people. Continued research and development is vital to the industry because use and demand for minerals constantly changes. Only 30 years ago, uranium was not worth mining. We once considered our nickel deposits nothing more than a nuisance. Today, of course, nickel is our most valuable metallic mineral ore. Without demand and a buyer willing to pay the price, a mineral is just a mineral. But when it can be mined and sold at a profit, it then becomes known as ore. And supporting the search for ore is what mineral resources people are all about.
It's the job of MNR's Mineral Resources Group people to help ensure that it will be found and used wisely, and that all of us and those who will follow will continue to enjoy the quality of life that minerals help to ensure. For just as this baby relies now on an Ontario mine for the talcum on its bottom, it and future generations will spend a lifetime depending on Ontario minerals for health, wealth, and enjoyment. For what indeed would life be like in Ontario without minerals? Thank <laughs> you.